Welcome back. So you'll notice I have a little color palette over here. Seems to be pretty minimal. And uh, we're gonna get into how we can expand upon this in a second. But I just wanna talk about a couple different situations that I run into when I'm working with clients or a product team. You know, sometimes a client will approach me with an established color system. In this scenario, we should always understand that product and the guidelines that come with it. There may be some strict limitations that we need to follow, but sometimes we have room for improvement. The first scenario is that we have a very strict color palette like this. Any size of company, I've personally encountered both large and small companies that have pretty strict color palettes. Some are great and extensive enough for digital products, and I find that's pretty rare. Others, not so much. So the first thing I like to do is to dive into that color palette and ask myself some questions. Do I have enough here? Can I add some shades or some variations of the existing color palette? The first thing to do is to go to your client and chat about what you can do to extend this palette. Most times, clients will agree to expand the palette if it is truly needed, especially if you need some variation within the product you're designing. So let's see how we can come up with some neutrals for this palette over here. Now neutrals can be used for a variety of things. Think like backgrounds we touched upon, alternate colors for text, and we can see how much of a difference that made when we were creating our own monochromatic color palette. So let's jump in here and we're gonna see how we can expand this. So let's just open up this frame just a little bit more. Okay. The first thing I like to do is start with my primary color. Actually, let's just bring this in the middle right here. What I'll often do is just make this a little smaller so I know they're kind of secondary. You know, maybe I'll stick with the same hue and just adjust like saturation just to give myself enough variety. So like maybe I'll use that color. I could probably use that for like banners or secondary colors. You know, it's just a lighter saturation than the primary. I can also get a little bit lighter here. You can already see that we're starting to expand it a bit. If I wanted to, I can actually start to think about, you know, just like changing that just a bit. And now we're starting to get into an analogous color scheme. And I find that often, if you really talk to your clients and you have a good uh, communication with them, you can really kind of convince them to just expand their palette just a bit if it really benefits them. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna keep on going just a bit. I'm gonna actually go a little bit to yellow. That's nice. And we can even go all the way to red if we want. But it's actually a lot of experimentation. So don't be afraid to kind of just go and tinker with your colors a bit to see, you know, if you can bring a little bit more variety to your interface if it needs it. You don't need to go super far. Like as you can see, I'm just kind of trailing off the path a bit just to provide myself enough variation. Actually, let's just go here. We're just gonna duplicate that. So we have like a black. And what we can do is we can kind of just give ourselves some gray. We don't need to necessarily we can actually use the same tint. Oops. I can tint our black just a bit. If you notice, like this is really, really gray, but if we just go a little bit over to the orange, it starts to get a little bit more warmer. So this gives us a little bit more variation. And you can just move your way up. Give yourself a couple of grays to work with. So that way you're not necessarily stuck. It's happened to me, especially when I was first starting out, you know, just using a strict palette and just getting stuck and not necessarily knowing what to do. You, you essentially have a pretty bad scenario of having like a, just like an oversaturated user interface that's really distracting. If I think about how like the use cases, like I think like this could be used for like icon and some text. Maybe this is for darker text. You know, you don't always want to display your copy in like a black. So, I mean, this could 
this black could probably, I mean, we don't even need to use black to be honest. Let me just tint. We can even use like a darker gray if we really want to create some contrast. So these could be used for things like backgrounds or like card backgrounds. Um, could be used for like icon and text, like I mentioned, if we want to create a little bit more contrast between our copy. You know, something like this could be used like for banners on our website, if it is a website. It's good to just have some, some accents. So I would say these would be like your accent colors. And these would be like primary colors that you're go to. And if you need to add a little bit more kind of spice, you know, you can bring these in if you want. And you always have your trusty white if you need it, which would probably be your background color on most pages. As you can see, like you can easily expand your color palette if you need to. I mean, follow the color schemes if your client allows you to kind of add more colors that deviate a bit from that palette. But as you can tell, this is the primary palette. And all I've done was, you know, reduce the saturation over here, get it closer to a, a very lighter orange. I also started moving the hue around and provided a couple of accents if I really needed to create more contrast within the UI. Super easy to do. Remember to sit down and have a conversation with your client. You can go ahead and start doing this and you know present it to them, but make sure that your arguments for doing this are very sound because some clients may not be as receptive as others, but make sure that you drive the point home that the reason you're doing this is to give yourself more flexibility when you're working within designs. Go out there, try maybe pulling an existing color palette from a website, you know, try maybe like a, a site like IMDB or an app like that, or maybe like Facebook, pull just their primary colors and you can even expand upon that and see what else you can come up with. Next, we're gonna create our very own color palette for our own client, Habitual.